When a standard vented fuel tank is used, an engine run typically gets leaner and leaner as the fuel burns down. A uniflow vented tank can help this situation under certain circumstances. This bottle will demonstrate the theory behind the difference between standard and uniflow venting. Let's simulate some fuel by putting a bit of blue food coloring in water. A standard vented fuel tank has a fuel outlet at the bottom and an air inlet at the top. The weight of the fuel in the tank bears down on the fuel outlet to create fuel pressure. The more weight there is, the higher the fuel pressure. Notice the fuel stream when the tank is full. Compare that to the lesser stream at a half tank. And when the tank is almost empty, the fuel barely comes out at all. It is this gradual decrease in fuel pressure that causes an engine to go lean when using a standard vented tank. With uniflow venting, the tank has a fuel outlet at the bottom just like the standard vented tank, but the uniflow air vent inlet is also at the bottom. The vent at the top is plugged. Notice that no fuel comes out whether the tank is full, half full, or almost empty. The weight of the fuel in the tank results in zero fuel pressure at the fuel outlet. So what's holding up the fuel? Gravity is trying to draw fuel equally from both the fuel outlet and the uniflow air vent inlet. Air cannot get into the tank, so a partial vacuum forms above the fuel. It is this vacuum that holds the fuel up, or more correctly, it is the ambient air pressure that forces the fuel to stay inside the tank. To get fuel out of a uniflow vented tank, either apply air pressure at the air vent or suction at the fuel outlet. The air pressure or suction you apply will remain steady while the fuel is consumed. Let's apply suction using a short length of tubing. In this demonstration, the weight of the water in the tube provides the suction and causes air to enter through the uniflow vent. Notice the fuel stream is the same whether the tank is full, half full, or nearly empty. When I studied this, I was excited I could use uniflow plumbing in the endurance plane I was designing. I needed a tank that would hold 40 ounces. Let's look at some problems I had with this. One major problem with the uniflow tank is the partial vacuum that forms above the fuel. This places the tank in compression. If the tank is allowed to collapse even just a little, then the weight of the fuel will increase the fuel pressure at the outlet. If the tank buckles back, the pressure is reduced momentarily. Even in this example, the pulsation in the fuel flow is caused by the plastic bottle flexing as each bubble enters. Both of these changes in fuel pressure could kill the engine, and a tank strong enough to eliminate this problem would be prohibitively heavy. In endurance, every ounce of weight in the equipment is an ounce less of fuel you can carry in the 64 ounce gross weight limit. Another problem is turbulence. The uniflow theory works great on the bench, but in flight the fuel is shaking around something awful. With the tank half empty or less, there is considerable air in the partial vacuum above the fuel. This air is easily compressed and rarefied under turbulent flight conditions, creating extreme and sudden changes in fuel pressure beyond my ability to react with my remote-controlled needle valve. Prohibitive tank weight and turbulent flight conditions are the reasons I chose not to use uniflow venting in my Black Wasp endurance plane. But uniflow venting is quite suitable on a small scale and where weight is not an issue. Here is a typical wedge type control line fuel tank. It is small and made of metal so it is quite rigid, perfect for uniflow venting. I built this model of it to show the plumbing. Remember with control line that gravity is not experienced straight down due to centrifugal force. Instead, it is at a 45 to 70 degree angle from vertical. Think of the tank as sitting like this. The pink straw represents the fuel draw for the engine. It terminates inside the tank at the back of the wedge. The uniflow vent is represented by the blue straw. Outside the tank, it is conveniently located where it won't leak when at rest on the ground. It terminates inside at the front of the wedge, which is actually at the same level as the fuel draw. It is far enough away from the fuel outlet that the air bubbles don't get sucked into the engine accidentally. A standard vent is provided, shown by the red and white straw, which is used only during filling. It is plugged during flight.
I hope you found this video informative. I'm Doug Blackmore.